That's how you cats go down the street, right? Is this? Now we walk. <laughs> what? Uh, kind of a robot thing going there. You guys don't have any fun at all. What a shame. No. <laughs> Same old game. Same old thing. What happens if somebody gets a cold? I gotta know. Everybody gets the cold? The show must go on. What part do you sing? What part do I sing? Oh, I see. That's <laughs> Take six. Where did it come from? Where, where did this group come out of? Well, back, back in 1980. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. I, uh, well, we have this canned, uh, canned phrase. All right. Um, I started a quartet in 1980 at a Christian college called Oakwood in Huntsville, Alabama. And uh, we were singing traditional black gospel music at the time. And we were rehearsing in a bathroom one day, uh, getting ready for a performance. And Mark Kibble came into the bathroom. Um, I think he came in. He might have already been there. No, I, I I'm not really in. sure. Okay. But he <laughs> came in and added a fifth part on the spot, sang with us that evening. And uh, a little while after that, Mervyn Warren came into the group, making it a sextet. And I guess for about the last four years, we've had this present group. The... Uh the gospel roots uh, are still with you. You're still working in the gospel uh, music, but uh, the harmonies that you use are completely uh, out of the gospel tradition. Huh? Who's who's responsible for setting this pace? Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Who's doing this to us? There's Mark and Mervyn. The hands are going up. What are your influences, fellas? Where 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 is, the, where is this instrumental concept coming from? Well, uh, growing up. I always listened to a lot of easy listening music, which introduced me to jazz uh, bands, such as, say, the Woody Herman Band. You know, you know all of the great, great bands. Um, I had a real strong interest in that. I also listened to um, quartet music then, and my uncle introduced me to groups like the High Lows and Singers Unlimited, Four Freshmen, and from there you get a uh, conglomerate of inspiration that along with gospel music uh, caused uh, me to begin writing and arranging for this particular kind of uh, group and the kind of harmonies that we do. That's me. How about you, Merv? Well, I basically grew up listening only to Christian music with some classical, some easy listening, but no jazz or pop really until, uh, until my teen years when I decided I was going to do what I wanted to do. <laughs> no, but... Uh, so it was kind of an after-the-fact thing because Mark and I had worked together as um, early teens and as this kind of thing. And then later on, I began listening to jazz, which just kind of broadened my horizons somewhat. I was asking Alvin before, how do you keep track of these charts? It's so complicated. You have so much going on. And he said that <coughs> you visualize the chords as whole pieces and your place in the chords as opposed to worry about your line and where it's going. To really see it as like one movement, huh? Oh, yeah. It's really like a keyboard player, you know, who's playing the chords. You know, each note is integral to, to what's going on. That's how we, how we view it. You know, each person is just part of the big picture. I think that's probably because all of us are instrumentalists. Really? And we were instrumentalists before we were singers. Well, probably before, except for Mark. No, I was too. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Mike is a genius. He does it all. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Dan. Well, but in any case, a minor, a minor miracle has taken place, and that is a gospel-oriented group that influences their jazz harmonies is now being uh, considered for the best new artists uh, by the Grammys. I mean, it says a lot uh, for all of us, I think, but particularly for you guys. Uh, any reflections on that? Uh? Well, we're very pleased by that, uh, but when we set out to, to do our music, we always wanted to reach people who wouldn't ordinarily be reached by traditional gospel music. And uh, 
as the categories go, we have the best new artist category, which I guess is a pretty much a, a conglomerate of, of everything. Everything. And we've got the best soul gospel performance, which is, you know, the religious side, and we've got the best jazz uh, vocal group side. So I think we've covered all the bases, and that's what we started out wanting to do. Wow. They don't have the best comedy nomination yet, but they may. If you stick around, you'll find out. Don't go away.